This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare, prepare the, the way, way for, for the, the Lord. Lord. Make straight paths for him. Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is near! Come and be baptized for the forgiveness of sin. Who are you? I am not the Christ. Who are you? Are you the prophet Elijah? No, I am not Elijah. Are you the prophet we've been waiting for? Why are you here? By what a fool are you? you do this? What do you say? No! I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord! Make yourselves ready, for he is coming. After me is coming one more powerful than I. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize with water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. This is the man. This is the one I was telling you about. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It is for this reason I come baptizing with water that he might be revealed to all of Israel! Lord, why do you come to me? I am not worthy to baptize you. I need you to baptize me. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Let it be so now. As Jesus was baptized, he came out of the water and the heavens were opened. And John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on Jesus. And a voice from heaven was heard saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With Him I am well pleased. After this, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to pray and fast for 40 days and 40 nights. He was tired, hungry, thirsty, and the devil came to tempt him. I've come to talk to you I know you've been here for quite some time You must be hungry, you must be thirsty Could I offer you some of my finest wine? Never mind, you've been here thirty Or was it forty days? That doesn't matter, you're hungry anyway. If you're the Son of God, then turn these stones to bread. Come on, prove to me there's power in the words you say. Man 
does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Forget the food. Let's take a journey to the holy city, the temple's highest wall. If you're the son of God, then throw yourself down. The ground will break your fall. After all, it is written, he will command his angels over you. I uh, seem to know a little scripture too. <laughs> it is written Never put the Lord Never put the Lord your God Never put the Lord over here You've got to see this view A world of riches These earthly kingdoms can be yours I have the power to offer There's one small request on which we must agree. You must bow down, bow down, and worship me. After the devil fled from Jesus, angels came and ministered to him. Later, as he returned to Galilee, the power of the Holy Spirit was upon him, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. As Jesus began his ministry, the lives of twelve ordinary men were about to change forever. Can you believe the number of people at the river when John preaches? The people listen to him talk about salvation and they repent. He baptizes so many people every day. But he's a strange one. He wanders in the wilderness like a wild man. Yes, but you can't deny John the baptizer is a prophet of God. We saw him baptize a rabbi from Nazareth. And John told us, told all of us, that this rabbi was the Messiah. The Messiah? John the baptizer said that? No. Yes. He didn't actually call him the Messiah. He called him the Lamb of God, and we followed him that day. His name is Jesus, and I believe he is the Messiah. You really do? Yes. Well, the God of our fathers knows we need the Messiah. It's been 
too long a wait. And our people have been under the Roman law long enough. Hey, that's him. The rabbi from Nazareth. That's him. Are you sure? Yes. You are Simon, son of Jonas. You will be called Peter. Come, follow me. James, Andrew, John, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Philip, my friend, leave your things there. Come with me. Bartholomew, Thaddeus, follow me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. found him who Moses and the prophets wrote of it's Jesus of Nazareth Did anything good come out of Nazareth come and see with your own eyes Simon Thomas follow me Matthew leave your table there come with me Judas, my friend, follow me. <laughs> ah, a true Israelite who says what he thinks. You know me, sir? Before Philip called you, while you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Because I said I saw you under the tree, you believe? You shall see greater things than these. You will see the heavens open and angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I couldn't believe the influence Jesus had on my two sons. When he called their names, they just left everything behind and followed him. There was something compelling about this man. Blessed are you who are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who weep and mourn, for you will be comforted. Blessed are you who are patient and meek, you will inherit the earth with the power from me. If you are hungry for righteousness, you will be filled. Blessed are you who are true and faithful. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed are you in whatever you do. Blessed are you. Blessed are you who are kind and merciful, for you will be shown God's mercy. Blessed are you who are pure in heart, for you will see mighty God. Blessed are you who are makers of peace, for you are children of God, bring the world harmony. 
If you are punished for righteousness, the kingdom is yours. Blessed are you who are true and faithful. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed are you in whatever you do. Blessed are you. Blessed, blessed are you who are true and faithful. Blessed are you. Oh, blessed are you. Blessed are you in whatever you do. Blessed are you. Even when the other disciples and I first started traveling with Jesus, we didn't yet realize who He really was or the extent of the power of God on His life. But our eyes really began to open when we went with Him a wedding in Cana. the most incredible thing I had ever seen. They ran out of wine, and the host was about to become totally embarrassed. Jesus' mother Mary called the servants over to him, and she said to them, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Jesus had the servants fill six stone jars with water. had one of the servants draw some of the water out. It had miraculously been turned into very good wine. to wine at the wedding feast was only the beginning of all the wonderful miracles Jesus would perform. Come with me now as we journey through the village streets and follow Jesus the Christ. Jesus! Master! What? Master, he's coming. What would you have me to do for you? Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see. Ah. I can see. I can see. Jesus, <laughs> See, you can see. 
I can see. adultery. Moses, in the law, commands that we should stone her. What do you say? What is he doing? Well, what do you say? If there is any man among you without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone at her. <sighs> Woman, where are your accusers? Has no man condemned you? No one, sir. Neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. Destroy us! How long has he been this way? Since he was a child, the demon that possesses him has often thrown him into the fire and the water to destroy him. If you can do anything, have mercy and help us. All things for him who believes. I believe, Lord. I believe. Be silent, Satan. I command you, evil spirits, leave him.
from the dead, what a miracle it was. And then to think that he would come to my house soon after that. There were so many people with him that my house was overflowing. And there was a paralyzed man who was brought by his friends on a bed. They tried to get him to Jesus, but there were just too many people. I couldn't believe my eyes when they made a hole in my roof and lowered him down in front of Jesus. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep, but one of them is lost. What does he do? Why, he leaves the 99 and he goes and searches for the one lost sheep until he finds it. And when he has found it, he bends down and picks it up and puts it on his shoulders and carries it home. And when he has gotten it home, he calls to his friends and his neighbors, and he says, I'm so happy that I found the sheep which was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectable people who do not need to repent. Or suppose there is a woman among you with 10 silver coins, but one of them is lost. What does she do? Why, she lights a lamp, and she sweeps the house, and she searches for it diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls to her friends and her neighbors, and she says, Come celebrate with me, for I found the coin which was lost. In the same way, I tell you, the angels of God rejoice over one sinner who repents. Your sins are forgiven, my friend. What? This is blasphemy! Does he think he's God? 
Only God can forgive sin. Why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic? Your sins are forgiven. Or arise, pick up your bed and walk. So that you may know that the Son of Man has authority in the earth to forgive sins. I say to you, arise. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. Now, pick up your bed and go home. again yes I know master in the resurrection I am the resurrection and the life 
Martha, Mary, do you believe this? Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Then roll away the stone. But he's been dead so long. Lazarus, come forth! won't forget that day either. All over the country they were talking about him. Everywhere you went, the name of Jesus was on the lips of every man, woman, and child. He was just a small town carpenter, but they called him prophet, teacher, rabbi. Some said he could heal, that he made blind men to see, and crippled men walk. Others told how he walked on water, and he calmed stormy seas, and he even made a little dead girl live again. Some were sure that this was the Christ, the Messiah, the one who would free Israel. But others said it was just some crazy nonsense, that he was simply another fake, like all those other false prophets. But we knew that he was real. We were witnesses. We had all seen his miracle working power firsthand. There was one time some of us disciples got into a boat with Jesus and we started to sail across the sea. All at once, a violent storm came out of nowhere and swallowed us up. The waves pounded our boat. The wind ripped at our sails. We thought we were all going to drown. But Jesus had the power not only over death and disease, but even the wind and the waves obeyed him. Too strong! It's way for time! 
allowed fear to be our weakness but Jesus reminded us once more that we should let faith become our strength we witnessed so many miracles all the books in the world could not hold the whole story so we've only told you a small part the things Jesus did were marvelous but the things he said were were staggering listen to some of the words he spoke about himself the Father and I are one. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Is it any wonder the religious leaders came to hate him so? He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. He who hears my words and obeys him who sent me shall not die, but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Yes. The way we obtain everlasting life is by obedience and by doing good works. We must win God's favor. Look at this temple veil. It shows us that we're separated from God's presence by our sin. Father, tell me again what the high priest does behind the veil. Once a year, he enters the Holy of Holies for the people. Then he takes the blood of an unblemished lamb as atonement for sin. I see. God is holy and we are sinners. Yes. So I can't get near to God on my own? That's right. Unless I have the blood of an unblemished lamb? Yes, yes, Brother, that's right. I am troubled. I have many questions. Why have you come to me? I thought you had all of the answers. I am going to talk with the Nazarene. What? Caiaphas will be furious. I know, but there are so many things that I want to know. And he says things that I have never heard before. He could be a false prophet. Are you forsaking the law? No, I love the law, but I've listened to him. Whenever he speaks, I am deeply moved. Nicodemus, you're a great teacher. The people listen to you. Yes, but now I must be the student, and he must be the teacher. Nicodemus! Rabbi! Rabbi! Rabbi, we know you are a teacher sent from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The 
wind blows wherever it pleases, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. But how can this be? You are Israel's teacher, and you do not understand these things? God so loved the world, Nicodemus, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever should believe in him will never die, but will live forever. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. all this noise about being born again who does he think he is the Messiah oh. no bah why he's just a Galilean the son of a poor carpenter mm -hmm. he's nothing special not like us we are the Pharisees, the noblest group on earth. We are the Pharisees, we hate to say our worth. But if God had picked a special man to carry out his wondrous plan, we know full well that man would be a Pharisee. Like me, 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 me. My dearest brothers, noblest friends, you know I pray each day at ten. And when I lift my words to heaven, I make sure I'm heard by six or seven. What a witness! Well, I do hope that you we're taking notes. I read the scriptures noon to night, and I can tell you wrong from right. There is no better kind of friend than one who will remind you of all your sin. Our sin? Oh, no, dear brother. Not our sin. Why? <laughs> we have Sin. That's right. Their sin. <laughs> this world is blessed to have us all. We few who strive to keep the law. But now the crowds turn to this Jesus and shout, Hosanna! This does not please us. Who does he think he is? Why? He thinks he's gone. Oh, God, why? We are the Pharisees, the noblest group on earth. We are the Pharisees, we hate to sing our worth. But if God had picked a special man to carry out his wondrous plan, we know full well that man would be a Pharisee. Like me, 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 The Pharisees, they were the self-appointed religious teachers of the community. But Jesus, he taught spiritual lessons that touched and met people's needs in our day-to-day -day lives. Huge crowds would often gather to hear him teach and to tell stories. I remember one time, more than 5,000 had gathered, and Jesus once again showed us his compassion for people and his miracle working power. Jesus, it's getting late. Should we send the crowd away to the village so they can get themselves some food? They did not need to go away. 
You give them something to eat. But Lord, there is only one boy here who has five loaves of bread and two little fish. <laughs> Bring them to me. Come, let's eat together. There's enough for everyone. He is Jehovah, God of creation. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, the balm of Gilead, the rock of ages. What an amazing experience it has been sitting at his feet witnessing the incredible miracles coming to know and love him and to believe that he was our long awaited Messiah I remember the day Jesus made his triumphal entry right here into Jerusalem everyone was preparing for Passover and the city was filled with activity and excitement in the law of Moses God said three times a year we were to keep a feast unto him. Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Just before each of these great religious feasts, throngs of people would crowd into the city, swelling its population many times over. They came from all over Palestine. Indeed, from all over the Roman world, speaking in many different native languages. Into this vital city at the season of Passover came Jesus and his disciples on the great triumphal entry <laughs>
There was never anything like it, and it didn't stop. The crowds followed him everywhere. Except for the religious Jewish leaders, everyone seemed to love him. Later, as he made his way into the temple, everything seemed to change. The temple was crowded with merchants and money changers, all loudly trying to make a profit. And there was a look of anger on Jesus' face when he saw what was happening to his father's house. So clap your hands to your temple. How could this be a robber's marketplace? So clap your hands to your temple. How could this happen to your holy place? Get out! Get out of here! All of you! He created such a stir, telling people what God was really like and how he wanted us to live. We'd never experienced anyone like him before. He brought the reality and power and the excitement and the love of God into our humdrum lives. He came into our town to teach and turned our lives upside down. We found out who we were following on the day of unleavened bread when the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed. As we shared our last supper with Jesus, he tried to make us understand what his coming death was all about. A sacrifice for the sin of the world. I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Just one of us? Who, cool, Master? The one who eats with me. The same will betray me. Master, is it I? What you are about to do, do quickly.
is my body. It's broken for you. So take it, take it and eat it. And each time This cup is the new covenant I'm making with you So take it and drink it Each time you do All of you will be offended this night because of me. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Even if everyone else is offended, I will never be offended because of you. Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Lord, I would die for you before I would ever deny you. I am weary with grief to the point of death. Stay here and wait with me while I pray. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. I am here all alone, praying to you. my will, but your own. May this cup be taken from me, yet I know the time has come. The final sacrifice, your only son. But be a lamb, the sacrifice for mortal man. Help this shepherd be a lamb that must be slain to bring life once again. I bear the sins of all. Father, will you in
bitter scene Must the sacrifice be me Once again I hear my call I can feel the agony The weight of all the sin that's placed on me Help the shepherd be a lamb The sacrifice for mortal man Help the shepherd be a lamb that must be slain to bring life once again. the world began. Strengthen me, my Father. Raise me up that I may draw all men unto you. For now, soon, my Father, I will be on my way to you. For if it is not possible, for this cup to pass me by. If I must drink of it, then your will be done. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinful men. Suddenly, suddenly, his brain was interrupted. Judas arrived with soldiers carrying clubs and swords. They forcefully took to Caiaphas, the high priest. 
There's a fire in the courtyard And I felt the deepest chill I drew in through the shadows Turned my back and I stood still A servant girl approached and asked Weren't you with him on the hill? And I said I did not know Turned then to the others While I fought the urge to run Their eyes were all upon me She said, I know that he's the one He was at the side of Jesus I tried so hard to hold my tongue But I said, I did not know Time and time and time again I relive the pain of my betrayal Little did I know That soon I'd see the truth of my you with him when they arrested him in the garden. I do not know this man. God curse me if I'm not telling you the truth. Are you accusing this man? If he were not a criminal, we would not have brought him to you. That's right. If this man is a criminal, then why don't you take him and judge him according to your own law? You know that we could put no man to death. And what has he done? He claims he is the Christ. A king! <laughs> and what has that? to do with me. Any man who claims to be a king is a rebel. A rebel against Caesar. I will question him myself. So, Jesus, you claim to be a king. Well, are you a king? It is as you say. This man is no criminal. He has been stirring up trouble all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Is this man Galilean? Yes. Then he is under Herod's jurisdiction, not mine. Guards, take this man to Herod. <laughs> Herod, who was in Jerusalem at this time, was known for his lavish lifestyle, disregard for religion, and interest in perversion and amusements. He was hoping to meet Jesus and see him perform some miracles. Herod immediately began asking Jesus many questions 
But Jesus gave him no answers. Caiaphas and the other priests began to accuse, mock, and taunt him, asking him to perform a miracle to prove himself. The soldiers also ridiculed and mocked Jesus, but he said nothing. Herod saw no reason to keep Jesus, so he sent him back to Pilate with a message saying, Anyone can see that this man is not a criminal. might not realize how serious this is. I have been called upon to put you to death. Death on a cross. Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? If you would just deny these charges, there is no real evidence. Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. Jesus, I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you. You would have no power over me at all if it were not given to you from above. <laughs> Since it is customary each year at Passover to release one prisoner, I will have him beaten and released. Oh, give us Barabbas instead! Give us Barabbas instead! What shall I do with this man who claims he's king of the Jews? Crucify, crucify him, crucify, crucify him, pretender, deceiver, a teacher of lies. Crucify, crucify him, crucify, crucify him, a schemer, a schemer, this man must die. But why? What crime has he committed? Both King Herod and I have examined this man and find him guilty of no crime. Do you want me to put an innocent man to death? But you release Barabbas to him! Give us Barabbas! Barabbas! Guards, bring me the prisoner Barabbas! Now, which one shall I release to you? This criminal Barabbas? Or this innocent man, Jesus? Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Barabbas! Release Barabbas! Guards, release the prisoner Barabbas! Now, what will you have to do with this man, Jesus? Crucify, crucify him! Crucify, crucify him! Pretender, deceiver, a teacher of lies! Crucify, crucify him! Crucify, crucify him! A schemer! I am innocent of this man's blood. I want nothing to do with his death. He is your responsibility. Let his blood be on us and our children. Have it your way then. Away with him. Let him be crucified.
Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Then he was filled with remorse, so he went out and killed himself. We half expected Jesus to raise a hand or speak a word to stop this wild nightmare. But he didn't. He kept as silent as a lamb. The angry crowds had turned their voices against him. From Hosanna to crucify. We couldn't believe it was happening. There was nothing any of us could do but stand and weep and watch. From the place of his trial, they marched him slowly through the street where he had ridden in triumph only days before. But this time, the king of the Jews wore a crown of twisted thorns and staggered under the weight of a heavy cross to a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there between two thieves, the Son of God was crucified. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowd pressed in to see a man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beam. There was blood on his back, and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head. And he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa. Called the way of suffering Like a lamb came the Messiah to rise The King But he chose to walk that road Out of his love for you And for me Down the Via Dolorosa All the way to Calvary the blood that would cleanse the souls of all men made its way through the heart of Jerusalem. Down the Via Dolorosa caused the way of suffering like a lamb the Messiah to rise the King but he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and for me down the Via Dolorosa all the way to Calvary
for what we've done but this man has done nothing wrong Lord remember me when you come into your kingdom I promise you today you will be with me in paradise And they placed above his head a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And those who passed by wagged their heads at him and hurled abuse. Father, forgive them, for they know not. Into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished.
hide my Lord Were you Fastened down, I spent the night in sleeplessness, 
and rose at every sound, half in hopeless sorrow, half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. So I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary. So I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they've moved him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body isn't there. We both ran toward the garden, then John ran on ahead to find the stone and the empty tomb. Just the way that Mary said But the winding sheet they'd wrapped him in Was just an empty shell And how and where they'd taken him Was more than I could tell Something strange had happened here But what I didn't know John believed a miracle But I just turned to go Circumstance and speculation didn't lift me very high For I'd seen them crucify him, then I saw him die Back inside the house again, all my guilt and anguish came Everything I'd promised him just added to my shame When at last it came to choices I denied I knew his name And even if he was alive It wouldn't be the same Suddenly the air was filled With a strange and sweet perfume Light that came from everywhere Drove shadows from the room Jesus stood before me His arms held open wide Then I fell down on my knees Clung to him and cried He raised me to my feet And as I looked into his eyes Love was shining out from him Like sunlight from the skies My guilt and my confusion Disappeared in sweet release And every fear I ever had Just melted into Heaven's gates are open wide He's alive, 
the very gates of hell and confronted Satan himself. Jesus took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he holds those keys in his hands yet today. Oh, he was alive. He was alive. We had him back with us. We were beside ourselves with joy. You see, this was going to change the whole world. Except that it seemed he wasn't planning on staying. For 40 days, Jesus appeared and talked to us about the kingdom of God. Then he said he had to leave and go to be with the Father. told us we were to make disciples of all nations to go into the whole world and preach the good news of redemption from sin through Jesus Christ the Messiah baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit then he told us to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit should come and fill us with power and we would become his witnesses then one day, he led us out to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed us. And after a while, as he was blessing us, an amazing, wonderful, awesome thing happened. Jesus was caught up into heaven in a cloud and carried out of our sight.
before he went away, Jesus made us one last promise. He said that he would come back in the same way that we had seen him leave, on a cloud, with power, and in great glory. Oh, Jesus is coming back for his own to take us to the place he's been preparing for us, a place called heaven, where we will be with him forever. If it were to be this very night when we hear a rumbling of thunder and looking up into the sky, we see a new heaven and a new earth. We see the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride dressed for her husband. And we hear a loud voice coming from the throne saying, there will be no more death or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more night. We will not need the sun. For the Lord God will give us light. And we will reign with him forever. I'm 